So hi Kashyap, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, thank you for being here today and representing the University of Durham. So in this video, we're going to talk about Kashyap's background. We're going to look at his timetable, his course and more. So if you want to study this specific course or any other course, make sure you check out this video until the end. And I have attached other relevant links in the description box below. So without further ado, let us begin. So hi Kashyap, welcome to my channel again. Hi Devani, thank you so much for having me here. And uh, just to give a heads up for everyone who is watching, uh, I was a person who, who has wa who has watched Devani's video when I was back in 2022 when I was applying for my masters and uh, <clears throat> watching her videos. I have got a sort of a lot of help in terms of uh, the visa process, what to do once you arrive here, and also a lot of insights about how to do your assignments and a lot more things. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. So can I please ask you to formally introduce yourself again, your name, which course are you studying and again at which university? Sure. Uh, so hello everyone. My name is Kashyap Patel. Uh, I am originally from uh, Ahmedabad, which is a city in India. And uh, currently I am uh, doing MSc management specialized in international business. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that at Durham University. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. It has been five months and a week as of today. Your first oh, yeah. semester there. So before we get into your course and everything, I want to know a bit about your background. So what did you do in your undergrad and how much experience do you have before you came here? Right. <clears throat> so talking about my education, uh, I did my undergrad from uh, Ahmedabad itself. Uh, I did my undergrad in uh, electronics and communication engineering. So that is my academic background and talking about my professional experience. Uh, I gained my professional experience due to COVID because uh, my plan was to do my master's just after my undergrad. But due to COVID, it wasn't possible due to obvious mm -hmm. reasons. But uh, I could even do it virtually, but that didn't make sense to me. So I decided to take sort of a break from academics. And then that is how I shifted to the uh, professional world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Post which I during my undergrad also, I was uh, introduced to this organization called ISEC which some of you might be aware of, wherein uh, I was a part of the organization for three years. Mm -hmm. And that is how my interest uh, shifted from uh, engineering to business and management. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is pretty much my background. Okay, interesting. Thank you for sharing. So in terms of your course, you're studying international business. So can you just give us like a brief, how is it different than a generic management degree or compared to an MBA? Right. So when it comes to international business, uh, how is it different? First, I'll focus on the how it is different from the general management side is more towards you have modules which are more inclined towards uh, focus towards more in international business aspect. Uh, for example, let's say you'll be studying case studies, you'll be studying companies based on an international perspective. Let's mm -hmm. say the kind of job job opportunities that you might get in the future will be more towards international companies who would, let's say, expand to different countries, who mm -hmm. would have plans to expand in different countries. So let's say, for example, the kind of modules that you might have is uh, global business, how global businesses are run in different countries, how people, how companies expand, how they downscale uh, recruitment process, training process mm -hmm. across countries and how uh, their uh, onboarding process is. So is I believe that is how the technical whole technical than a management degree. Is that what you mean? Uh, not technical, but it is more focused on niche point, which is focusing more towards the international perspective of it. Mm -hmm. Rather than let's say just focusing on a particular country, it is more towards uh, how they are performing into different countries and expanding into that and that how they are uh, generating revenue by expanding in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you tell me a bit about your application process? Um, whom did you apply with? How was the timeline? So talking about the timeline, uh, I believe everyone should uh, start as early as possible, as uh, many of you might know. So I started around uh, exactly I, as far as I know, October 2022. I shortlisted the colleges and uh, one of the major reasons applying to UK was, I mean, you up, you need to apply to Russell Group, right? When it comes to, let's say, the top universities of the UK. So that was my main um, target. And that is what I did. Mm -hmm. So I applied to multiple universities uh, before around like October and November. That is 
what my application timeline looked like so these couple of months i applied and uh, i guess during uh, december itself december end mm-hmm. i got my offer letter from durham so durham was my first offer letter only so i okay. picked that so what made you pick durham over the others and which other universities did you even apply to so the other universities apart from that durham that i applied were uh, one of them was warwick second was imperial mm-hmm. uh, third was uh, manchester and mm-hmm. uh, fourth was bath so i applied mm-hmm. to only four or five universities uh, considering let's say one of them was dream uh, second was average and one uh, the last one was safe so these mm-hmm. categories were there mm-hmm. and uh, i got offer letter from uh, bath and durham mm-hmm. and other three i didn't get Mm-hmm. so i mean one of the obvious choice for me was to go to durham and apart from that it, uh, one of the other factors was also that it is a collegiate system so how it works in durham is that i believe as far as i've heard it is uh, area wise it is one of the biggest colleges in the uk mm-hmm. because it has 17 colleges so these 17 colleges has students from different fields let's say psychology engineering management marketing Mm-hmm. so th- all the students are allocated into these colleges mm-hmm. so the college is essentially not based on the kind of course that you are in it no. can be anything right okay. Okay. so that is how the whole system is so basically you do not have one big campus but multiple campuses across the city is that right yeah so yeah so almost half of the city is just the university mhm oh how nice a very student centric mm-hmm. city so can you tell me like yeah. again how is it your divided and how many modules do you have in each semester so the year is essentially divided into two, three semesters three uh, terms uh, i believe it, it is more or less the same in uh, all the universities so the first term this term 1 term 2 and term 3 term 1 is more about generic subjects like strategic management and then uh, marketing strategic marketing accounting uh, and economics right so these three modules post which in term 2 you have a choice to you have two modules uh, compulsory mandatory okay. which is global business and uh, global marketing mm-hmm. which is why i mean which is essentially because you have taken an international business which is why you study the global perspective of let's say the business the marketing hr and so on and so forth mm-hmm. post which you have the option to choose from different modules which includes uh, so i have taken uh, consulting and innovation and technology management okay. so the reason why i chose these two modules is because i have an interest of uh, going into consulting uh, field in mm-hmm. the future right and why innovation and in technology is because it actually combines with tech uh, it co- actually combines with consulting mm-hmm. in a way through which like i have an engineering background i i can do consulting and if i do the innovation and consulting uh, innovation and technology management module mm-hmm. there there is one role which is open to me which is a technological consulting graduate right correct, correct. so that is how i came to a decision of uh, taking these two modules optional modules mm-hmm. so yeah that is more over uh, the kind of modules that i have so while choosing the course international business like you know of course you might have explored like more specific like for example as you are studying marketing you might have explored these degrees as well but you know with so many options what made you choose this specific degree like if my if my right. question is not clear like leads for example has like marketing management there is business management international business like there's so many like combinations so why was this the perfect course for anybody who wants to study here right so uh, talking about my firstly my experience i had experience in, in back in india about uh, sales business development partnerships and uh, client centric roles in general right so the companies i worked for in india were not big companies these were startups these were uh, small private companies and so on and so forth mm-hmm. so now i wanted to explore the bigger part of it wherein like i wanted to work for let's say big companies or let's say i want to get that experience of uh, working in big companies which is present in let's say multiple countries or uh, let's say have plans to expand in multiple countries okay. right so i believe that was the main uh, point which i had in my mind as to if i have to let's say reach to a point of uh, working in a big company one of the ways i can do that is through a degree which is uh, catering to that particular experience right mm-hmm. so i guess this was one particular degree which was supporting to that uh, one one of that goal mm-hmm. so yeah that was like my simple approach 
Okay, interesting. So can you tell me more about your course? Like how many lectures do you have every day and how long is one lecture more or less? So talking about like currently my term two is going. So for term two, uh, I have classes five days a week. I mean, almost every day, Monday to Friday, but it is not like it is equally divided. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have classes for four hours a day. Sometimes it is six hours. Sometimes it is only one hour. Okay. depending on the module that you have taken right mm -hmm. so classes for like particularly for classes it is uh, the lectures it is for 2 hours and there are seminars which is basically a smaller group of people and which is focused more on the practical implementation side of thing which is kind of let's say a st case study or let's say a small consulting uh, case study which focuses more on a group discussion right mm -hmm. so these are the two kind of uh, parts which are there in the modules so can you teach or uh, tell me like how teaching is more in detail like in the lecture do they just come and show a presentation and the main work happens in the seminar can you just talk about more in detail so talking about the teaching style it is uh i would say a little bit different from india uh it is a mix of both what you said uh they also have a presentation going on and in between so there's a case study, which is a part of the lecture itself. So first, what you need to do is, let's say you need to discuss the case study. Uh, essentially, the first half of the lecture is uh, the teacher teaching you the whole, let's say the kind of theories that are there in the module, uh, the kind of uh, frameworks that are there in the module, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. The second part is more about discussing the case study with your colleagues, which are there, let's say sitting around you and so uh, like that. So mm. the second half is more towards uh, discussion based and then uh, whoever wants to share can share the share their perspectives about the case study itself. So mm -hmm. that is how the whole lecture is based upon. So let's say if it is a finance class, it is more towards uh, practical, let's say solving a particular uh, sum or a particular uh, applying a particular uh, method on a particular sum. So yeah, that's how it is. And because you're learning so many different subjects, like your finance is a specialty, marketing, HR. So how much in detail are they going about each subject? Or are they giving you like an overview of, okay, this is marketing, for example, these are the four P's of marketing and that's it. Or are they even teaching you like the tools for to promote, for example, like how in-depth is it? So one of the things that I observed uh, in the education, education system of the UK is that they have a 10 week of a particular term right the term ends in 10 weeks which is almost let's say a two and a half month so mm -hmm. in that 10 weeks you cannot let's say cover everything that you might want to so during the lectures you have certain amount of uh, materials that are supplied to you beforehand mm -hmm. which is let's say the presentation that is going to be uh, discussed in the class itself right. so you you need to have some sort of pre-reading done before mm -hmm. you come to the class so that you have sort of an idea of what is going to be discussed in the class today. Mm -hmm. So the amount of readings that you have and the kind of lecture that you go through is a little bit different because in the lecture, you will have a summary of the kind of chapters that you have read, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially, if I have to narrow down, it is kind of a funnel. So before the class, you read the whole sub, uh, whole uh, chapter. And then in the class, the funnel narrows down. And in the seminar, the, again, the funnel narrows down. So that's how they have created the structure. So for pre-reading and things like that, do you have a portal where they upload it? Or how do they send you emails? Or how does that work? So for pre-reading, pre we have a portal as well as you can borrow books from the libra library, whatever uh, the person might like to uh, adopt to in terms of, let's say, I prefer uh, reading a physical book because... Uh, that is how I have been accustomed to and right. the people who let's say wants to mark anything or something they can also download a pdf or let's say read from the portal itself mm -hmm. okay so in terms of your assignments um because it's an international business degree so how like do you have more of presentations because you have to do like elevators pitch or things like that or is it more like written mm -hmm. so I guess it essentially depends on the kind of module that you have taken so let's say if you have taken, let's say, a marketing module, then it is more about, uh, so we have two parts. One is the formative and one is the summative. So the formative is more about a pre-test pre of the summative, right? It is a, uh, I guess, practice test sort of thing. So it mm -hmm. gives you a taste of the final exam, but mm -hmm. it is not marked. It is not counted in the 
final marks that are there so okay. the formative is more based upon let's say case studies or let's say presentations that you might have mm-hmm. but the summative is a 2500 words assignment more mm-hmm. or less for everyone and uh, for finance exam i mean for finance modules there is a written exam which you need to write because essentially finance it doesn't make sense to write assignments it is more about sums and everything right so that is how it is and for consulting which is a module that i have taken right now mm-hmm. <clears throat> you need to find a company <clears throat> who wants your help uh, in the kind of challenges that they are facing currently and you as a team will help them coming up with Uh, practical recommendations that the company can implement to get to increase their let's say revenue or any kind of issues that they are facing currently sounds interesting so for every subject how many assignments do you have an average is it like a 25 75 percent divide or 100 percent for one assignment or something like that? so for me it is 100 percent uh a 2500 assignment Mm-hmm. but for one of the modules what we have is 30% weightage weightage is given to a particular uh, video group video assignment mm-hmm. and 70% is a 2000 word assignment so essentially it depends on the kind of module that you choose mm-hmm. which is predefined which is given to you in a form of a pdf at mm-hmm. the time of selection of the module right. and uh, likewise you'll get an idea as to which module can i take and what kind of assignment summative assignment final exam or what i will have at the end of the mm-hmm. module <clears throat> So again in terms of teaching because it's like a business degree do you have professionals from the industry who come to teach you or more phd or more theoretical teachers who might not have such a maybe like a businessy background so what is that like So talking about the uh, professors it is uh, a mix of everything there have been people uh, who has been industry leaders previously and has now entered the field of academics So if I talk about let's say our consulting uh, professor, she has been into PwC like for twenty years, and now she has shifted to consulting. Mm-hmm. So she can bring a good sound knowledge about consulting as well as the practical side of it. So that is one benefit. Mm-hmm. And uh, talking about let's say organizational behavior, the <clears throat> professor that he that is there, uh, he is a PhD, and uh, he is currently doing his research on let's say trust. so mm-hmm. it is very important for us to let's say uh this uh, take choose our modules depending on our interest as well as let's say the kind of background that the professor has so yeah right makes sense um and in terms of your assignments like how because like you know business solutions is like a very subjective term if that makes sense like there is no correct answer of how you want to expand or what strategy you want to implement so how much leave your freedom you have to create your own ideas or do you have to focus more on research because being a russell group university obviously research plays a very big role about like the you know google scholar and things like that so how much weightage would you think the university gives for each aspect uh so i would just like to clear the question uh, it is more more towards uh, how much weight is is given to the research part uh huh and so what is the second your part your own personal opinion about like your strategy like okay for example you have an assignment and you have your own strategy so for us at least at kings we always had to back up our ideas with research you know like there mm. was no leeway for creativity i could not just say because i want to it always had to be you know mm. backed up by research so how is it for you yeah so I, i believe it is more or less the same because uh, the kind of education system uk follows is, in general is that let's say even if it is your own opinion it should be backed by data in terms of let's say quanti- if it is a quantitative data you need to let's say back it up by some credible source and mm-hmm. it is, if it is a qualitative data again it needs to be backed up let's say by good credible source which makes sense mm-hmm. so i believe that it is more or less the same so before your assignments or before you started university did durham provide you with a, like a guideline about plagiarism and turn it in or was it like you were just thrown into the waters so essentially it, did, it i mean they didn't provide uh, any sort of uh, help before i came here but, but i mean we did we were introduced to plagiarism and these kind of concepts because for me as an engineer i mean i wasn't uh, very much accustomed to these kind of concepts that uh, plagiarism is also a thing right mm-hmm. i i got introduced to plagiarism through your videos so i had an idea mm-hmm. uh, because i saw videos on youtube right but for the people who didn't saw uh the university did give after a couple of weeks right they 
had the videos on the portal itself as to uh, what essentially is plagiarism how can it happen how can you avoid it and so on and so forth so yeah they did and how about a final semester do you have a dissertation or a business project oh yeah that's the interesting part so i believe i am i as a person is very practical and uh, i think in a very logical and practical way about things so i believe dissertation is not something that i would like to do so mm-hmm. for sure you have both options so for uh, the people in durham you have two options you can either do business project or you can either do the dissertation right mm-hmm. both are for uh, 15000 words but the only difference is that the business project is more practical you mm-hmm. will have a real company when who with whom you will be working with so mm-hmm. probably i am aiming to do a business project as of now lucky so, you yeah. have an option for us we did not have an option just a dissertation oh for marketing who does a dissertation anyways but but oh, lucky yeah, you correct. have so in terms of your business i guess for sorry yeah, continue oh. I guess for marketing, it is uh, there are two options in terms of dissertation, which is like one is the normal dissertation and the other one is a influencer marketing dissertation. If I'm not wrong, because one of my friend is there in marketing, so he has that. Oh, I'm not sure. At least in Kings, it was just like one mm-hmm. dissertation and nothing too interesting about that. Okay. So, um, how hard would you say is to do your course? Like, how many hours a day do you study? Oh. So I mean, uh, it depends on person to person as to how. uh easily you are adapt to adaptable to let's say the kind of structure that the university follows let's mm-hmm. say if you if you are easily able to let's say complete the readings on time and do your stuff on time mm-hmm. it'd be pretty much easy to let's say score a merit or even distinction it's not mm-hmm. a big deal because studying i mean doing an undergrad in india you will at least have an idea about how to score marks that mm-hmm. is something that i believe any indian student is good at Mm-hmm. scoring marks is not a big deal here so essentially passing is not a big deal here to get a distinction that is a big deal so for that to get an edge you will have to go to that extra mile mm-hmm. of let's say uh, standing out from the crew so one of the results that came out recently in our term one was 3% people got uh, distinction 60% of the class got merit so that is how the crowd is so that's how it's a parabolic if you see in terms of the marks it is a parabolic let's say the 3% and 3% got fail 3% got distinction mm-hmm. and 60% got merit and uh, the rest were in the 50s right so that is how it works so if you do things on time do it well in a good manner according to what has been asked mm-hmm. you will pretty you will go score pretty good marks okay so uh, what is your class strength how many total students are studying your specific degree course so for management in general i believe there are uh, <clears throat> north to 160 or 180 people right and uh, post which it is divided into specific uh, specialization which is let's say general management ib supply chain operations so okay. on and so forth mm-hmm. so it might be like 30 35 for each okay so in terms of your lectures you have all like all the management students are together and then like for or how how many people in a lecture more or less so it depends on the module that everyone has taken so let's say if if there is consulting consulting is something that is very attractive to most of the people so consulting has more people let's say over 100 people okay so it is in a big auditorium sort of class mm-hmm. and let's say if it is let's say innovation and technology management a very niche number of people have take, taken that because that's a very uh, specific field so okay. there are less let's say around 30 40 people so okay. it essentially depends on the kind of module that you choose And how about seminars? How small groups are there? So for seminars, it's it's more or less a fixed number, which is between fifteen uh, to twenty. So it might vary between fifteen to twenty. Hmm. Um. So in terms of your like, classmates, like how interactive are they? Like, do people bring because a variety of ideas? Do they really have experience, or mostly people are freshers? So talking about the kind of. Uh, <clears throat> people that are there in our class it is uh, a wide range of culture as well as the kind of age group that they are in uh, in terms of if i talk about the country it is it varies from let's say obviously britishers mm-hmm. indians uh, then uh, nigeria nigeria is also one of the uh, country that is there uh, chinese mm-hmm. east east asian countries mm-hmm. and uh, there are few people from the states as well so yeah i mean it's it's quite diverse you get 
a lot of perspectives talking mm-hmm. about people talking in the class itself um i would say the people who are let's say much more confident who has uh, kind of worked before are more let's say confident to talk in the class itself because mm-hmm. they know the know how of how things work they mm-hmm. have had let's say certain experience before coming for the degree itself mm-hmm. so again the point comes here is about the age factor the age group is i believe it may vary from the 22 to 26 or 27 right okay. mm-hmm. that is what the range would be okay interesting and how many percent indians would you say there are uh so as far as i've seen in the other universities the percentage of indians is very more i mean very high mm-hmm. but in durham it is less as far as i've seen right as of now i would say in terms of percentage it is uh, 10 to 15% let's say if there are 100 people so mm-hmm. 10 to 15 people would be indian okay um so because you said like some people do come with a bit of experience in this degree so do you think like for a person with experience this degree adds value or is it more of a, like a more fresher's perspective who wants to change industries right so i think it depends on uh, your thinking capability let's say for me i had couple of years of experience so what i thought how this would make sense for me is that uh so uk essentially doesn't consider your indian experience so that is what i've heard so far i haven't gone into the real corporate world of the uk so this is what i've heard mm-hmm. so let's say if you have let's say a cu- couple of years of experience or even three uh it is good to do a let's say a masters or let's say a msc because there there you actually study let's say the basics of business mm-hmm. the basics of finance the basics of people the basics of let's say the practical business that people do mm-hmm. and let's say if you have let's say more experience than 3 years i would suggest you go for a couple of years of more experience and then do an mba that okay. would make more sense because mba has a little more value than msc for sure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. okay so um So now you have completed a semester here at Durham. So if you had to name like few things you wish you knew before you came here in terms of like the education or learning, what would those be? Right. I think one of the things would be prioritizing your time because uh, it is very difficult sometimes to uh, manage everything because let's say you are living alone in a new country for the very first time at least for me it's for the first time so let's say managing your finances cooking your food i mean as a let's say as a male cooking food is something that uh, is very not many people do mm-hmm. but yeah i have learned that so that doing that going to classes let's say if you have a part time going for part time so these many things sometimes it gets really overwhelming right but at the end of the day i guess something that i have i knew before would be let's say some advice if i had gotten let's say how to manage everything or let's say how you can uh, do part time along with your studies not compromising any of them and acing at both of them mm-hmm. that is something that i would have m- m- missed upon okay so if you have to name one favorite thing about your university what would that be I think uh, I mean uh, many people might not agree to me but I think uh, one of the good things that I like about Durham is that there are less Indians that I see here is that I mean I take good pride on this because I mean if you go to a different country it does make sense if you are studying with Indians but it should be up to a limited extent otherwise you will not get that exposure that you are here for Yeah. So I believe that that is uh, one of my let's say eighty five percent of Indians. I think they are really complaining about that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I mean, essentially, that doesn't make sense. So that is something that I'm really happy about that we don't have that many Indians. So that mm-hmm. let's say we can uh, do group assignments, group videos, or even let's say in general talk to p- different people apart mm-hmm. from Indians. Right. So, yeah. and if you have to name one thing which you think durham could have done better or you don't quite like what would that be i think this is uh, in general for the uk it's about the weather it's really cold windy and rainy because the kind of 
environment i come from it's 40 degrees even like in the during the sunny days it's like 40 degrees and coming here it's between 0 degrees and 5 degrees yeah so it's super difficult we can't do anything but yeah, i mean you That's need to tough. adjust so let's just talk a bit more about your university like beyond your course now um are you part of any societies and clubs at durham and do they have many yeah so there is a whole team who handles the societies part of it at the university level and there's a and there's 17 teams which heads for all the 17 colleges so there's a very good opportunity for people who are let's say interested in uh, joining societies so particularly for me i have joined uh, the sports society i play cricket usually so i've joined that post which i also joined the pool team and uh, i have also joined the consulting team wherein we we do practical case studies and uh, we have mock mock uh, interviews and so on and so forth so these are the few uh, societies that i've joined because uh, i mean i didn't have much time uh, going for other societies but yeah i mean for people who are interested in let's say even uh, there is baking society that i've recently heard there is a decoration society i mean more from small things like that to big things like mm-hmm. let's say consulting and so on and so forth so i mean it's a huge uh, module yeah huge thing and how does the university help you in your career do you have any career workshops to help you build your cv or how is that so for this uh one of the good things i believe is that you will have to take the step to go to the university and ask because uh, they'll not spoon feed you in terms of let's say making your cv or let's say doing a practical uh, assessment center or something right so recently we had uh, a training on how to ace assessment centers because the recently graduate roles are open so they had a session on uh, how to ace uh, assessment centers and interviews right. so they do uh, run these kind of workshops every month how to write cvs how to make a ats friendly cv or let's say how to write a cover letter so these these sort of uh, workshops they run every month and they also have free service that they offer uh, on the university portal through which you can book a review for your cv they, so they you can book the service and you can uh, go physically or even virtually on zoom you can uh, go to the team give your cv they'll give you feedback and then you can improve on and so on and so forth okay um and talking about because durham being like a comparatively like much smaller city than london how is the social life there like what do you do after uni so the people who are uh, let's say party people uh, they find any way about socializing let's say by going to pubs or let's say having house parties mm-hmm. so talking about house parties it is much much more towards what kind of group that you have mm-hmm. uh, so yeah i mean that is very specific and talking about pubs there are, are pubs but when it comes to pubs it is let's say you might go after a certain time at the night so there are no buses so you need to walk mm-hmm. which is like a 30 minute walk to the city center from the college and then back mm-hmm. and you will come back let's say at 2 3 mm-hmm. so it's very exhausting at least for me but yeah. the people who let's say party regularly for them so essentially i've seen that britishers party a lot yeah, so yeah. i've seen them walking let's say after 8 9 and uh, there are a lot of pubs i would say and uh, i have also been there uh, i guess a few of them not mm-hmm. all of them but yeah a few of them when i was there in the freshers week mm-hmm. but yeah the nightlife is uh, i would say normal decent every mm-hmm. every like so over, over all the shops walk like there is no public transport in durham no there is no public transport let's say after a certain point after like let's say 8 or 9 there's no buses running because that's uh-huh. how the county county functions so is it a safe city to live in yeah so far i haven't seen any sort of uh, let's say crimes or any sort of robbery or anything in front of my eyes or, or I never have heard anything happening like that So okay, it's a safe city. So in terms of your finances um how what is like the monthly average spending in Durham how much is the accommodation which students can expect So uh I did my research before coming to the university so my college is just beside the business school so that is how I chose my college So for travel I don't need to I don't have much ex- it's just going to and fro uh, for my part time that's the only 
uh, expense of travel talking about the accommodation i live in a college accommodation so it is uh, 660 pounds per month and uh, talking about the groceries it essentially depends on the kind of uh, uh, lifestyle that you have mm-hmm. but on an average for me i would say it is uh, 100 to 120 per month just for groceries and uh, if you add that to the accommodation it would be let's say more or less towards 8 to 900 <clears throat> Okay so thank you for sharing your expenses so in terms of part time jobs so what i've heard is in other cities at least in kent or york um it is like a notion that only undergrad students get most of the part time jobs and uh, master students really have to struggle so can you just tell me about your journey of how did you apply how did you get your part time job and everything related to that yeah so talk about part the kind of market that is there in durham uh, in part time job so essentially there are 15 to 20000 students that study currently in durham mm-hmm. and uh, the city is very small so the kind of opportunities that are there the number of opportunities are also comparatively very less let's say as compared to obviously london or let's say birmingham manchester so on and so forth mm-hmm. so the people let's say who started earlier during let's say september mid september september end or even october they secured let's say the first tier one part time jobs because it's a whole cycle that uh, changes every year let's say for master students it's a one year course so let's say the people who were doing part time jobs in 2022 mm-hmm. shifted to let's say full time jobs in different cities or let's say to any other uh, country right so that part time jobs got opened again in september and mm-hmm. the people who it's sort of a first come first serve basis Mm-hmm. so for me my journey started i started applying the at the end of september mm-hmm. so if i talk about specifically numbers i applied to 50 plus jobs mm-hmm. around 50 and uh, just part time jobs and the ratio for me was uh, i gave five interviews so from 50 i got five interviews it's a 10% ratio and from those 5% i mean from those five interviews uh, i secured one offer so that is how um, the statistics has been so far in terms of like interviews like for what kind of job roles are you talking is it in your field or like more of a barista and things like that yeah so um so my approach was very simple that uh, first obviously i'll try to get a part time job related to my field so i mean i mean out of those 50 odd uh, part time jobs almost 25 to 30 were uh, properly related to my field which is more towards let's say let's say customer centric roles sales representative right and uh, those kind of roles so i applied to william hill uh, next uh, marks and spencer and uh, one of them was sainsbury mm-hmm. and uh, the last one is unite students mm-hmm. so now you are currently five. working with unite right yeah currently i'm working with unite students Okay, so in terms of that, like, did you, is it like an online internship or a part time, or do you have a proper office you go to? So it is essentially, uh, so it is a student accommodation. So they have three sites in Durham, uh, mm-hmm. which is based uh, near the city center itself, spread across the city. Mm-hmm. So it is a part time, which I am doing. I am doing currently fifteen hours per week, which mm-hmm. is let's say below twenty hours, obviously. Mm-hmm. so that is how my schedule is for part time job and for other students in your class uh, usually what kind of part time jobs are available in durham or what kind of part time jobs students usually do so uh, as far as i have seen people are doing uh, jobs in uh, restaurants cafes and uh, even uh, retail stores mm-hmm. uh, there is one of my friend who is working in the nike store which is there in the city center so okay. that is one of them couple of people are working in cafes so mm-hmm. that is good so yeah. everybody is one of the good nest to find a part time job yeah okay that's good but know. i mean yeah you need to you need to be there all time let's say if you give up in between or let's say if you are not that much more motivated mm-hmm. it will not work out for you because essentially uh, the very first let's say 10 15 applications you will face rejections you will face a uh, denial right mm. and that is the kind of mindset you you have to develop that even after let's say 20 30 rejections you will have to like bombard 
uh, that apply button itself mm-hmm. get follow up email you will have to do and that is how you land a job there's no shortcut to that so are these part time jobs like flexible in terms of university timings what if like you clash how do you manage both so for me uh, unite students it is essentially a student accommodation so they need uh, people 24 hours 7 across 365 days okay so my role is more towards in, so i'm in the sales team uh, okay. wherein i'm the customer experience team member right so it is more towards uh, exploring the customer sales journey mm-hmm. it's from onboarding the student for let's say viewing the accommodation mm-hmm. to signing the contract paying the accommodation fees moving them in and the whole process customer journey you go through the whole customer journey essentially mm-hmm. so that is how the role is post which it, it is also solving uh, day to day queries of students so for me i work on weekends mm mm-hmm. so students like me prefer work to prefer like would prefer to work on weekends and uh, working professional who are let's say essentially everyone is britisher in the company mm-hmm. so they prefer to work during the weekdays so it is a very mix of it says real well for me as of now okay um so in overall like did your university like what expectations you had from durham did they match your reality like basically does expectations meet reality um uh, so i would say it is 50 50 uh, in some factors they did some factors uh, not that much what i expected mm-hmm. uh talking about what were the factors that didn't expect i mean that i didn't uh, think were met mm-hmm. one was that uh, the number of hours is very less so let's say it's a one year course but you have holidays let's say vacations for four and a half five months Yeah. So that is something essentially you are actually studying just for six to seven months and completing a master's degree in those six seven months. Right. So that is something that you might need to research as per your university as to what is the actual time that you will spend time on studying. Right. Mm-hmm. So I believe that is one major point that I felt was missing is missing currently. and after you know living in a city like you are from ahmedabad now and durham being a such a smaller city compared to that um do you feel like moving back or do you like uk and you would like to continue your journey here all right so i am a very um, as i said i'm a very logical person so i mean again practical as well so i would like to get let's say benefit from the kind of investment that i have made Mm-hmm. so i would for sure would like to work for at least the next couple of years mm-hmm. the psw that is there mm-hmm. uh, i'll for sure work for these two years get relevant work experience and uh, if everything goes well uh, and if i get a sponsored job uh, mm-hmm. i will stay here if not then i also don't mind uh, shifting to back to india because then i'll have a couple of years of experience back in india mm-hmm. and in the uk so i think i will have a very pretty good uh edge as compared to let's say yes. a normal candidate who would apply right so i think this has been very insightful but just to overall conclude if you have to give one best piece of advice to anybody who is coming to the uk what would that be i think it's very important to do your research and network with people because uh, research is for you no consultancy or uh, no company will be able to guide you as equal to your research that you have done yourself mm-hmm. so do your research network to people in terms of talk to current students of the university that is your target university let's say from any university that you are from watch youtube videos very important because yes, i agree sometimes th- yeah because sometimes there are people who would give you wrong information but that wrong information is also important because uh, you will know what not to do Mm-hmm. that is also important what not to do mm-hmm. so essentially these three things plan planning is something that i would suggest researching networking and uh, watching youtube videos right these are the few things but really thank you kashyap this has been very very insightful for somebody who was planning to go to durham myself i think i got a very realistic you know life updates and everything like that about your course and what to expect so thank you so much for being here So do you mind if I share your LinkedIn in the description box below if somebody wants to you know, reach out to you anytime and network? That's yeah, okay. Yeah, surely. I do look forward to that. That's totally fine. 
Perfect. Thank you so much, Kashyap. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.